God! 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 Kids are cute and cuddly. Well, at least the majority. Then there are some rare bad pieces that are just things of nightmares. Let's take a look at some of them facing life sentences longer than their age. Number 8. Cameron Heron The then 18-year-old man who was behind the wheel of a Ford Mustang that hit and killed a mother and her baby on Bayshore Boulevard in 2018 was sentenced to 24 years in prison. Heron and another man, John Barano, are accused of racing at the time of the deadly crash. Barano also pleaded guilty. He's serving a six-year prison sentence. This crime took two beautiful lives and left four families broken, said State Attorney Andrew Warren. No sentence can repair that damage or bring back the lives lost, but we hope this outcome delivers some comfort and closure for Jessica's and Lilia's families. So on count one, the court's going to uh, adjudicate the defendant guilty, sentence him to nine years in Florida State Prison, sentence him to 15 years Florida State Prison, and that'll run consecutive to count one for a total 24 years Florida State Prison. And I'll direct the bailiffs to take Mr. Heron into custody. Number 7. Samantha Grigg That spring, Samantha Grigg would walk into a prison instead of across a high school graduation stage. After a judge's ruling, she'll spend between 6 and 15 years in a cell instead of the next 4 years in Eastern Michigan University classrooms. Grigg, 18 of Saline, could barely hold her head up as she heard Clinton County Trial Court Judge Randy Tavanen sentence her to prison for the death of Michigan State University student Dustin Frolka, 19. Grigg pleaded guilty to manslaughter and unarmed robbery charges. Through tears, Grigg apologized for her role in Froekel's homicide. She said she never meant him any harm, though she knew she was driving two people to a robbery. He was a fellow musician, Grigg said, her voice catching on emotion. It really breaks my heart. I wish I could take it back every day. I would like to extend my deepest remorse to the family of the victim. He was a fellow musician. It really breaks my heart. Number 6. Kyandria Cook Circuit Judge Matthew Foxman sentenced Kyandria Cook to 20 years in prison for carjacking and battery. Her mother's reaction when Foxman read the sentence went viral. For the sentence, the judge pointed out that the crime had been intentional and orchestrated, and since Cook was the main part of that, he sentenced her to 20 years in state prison. As soon as he said that, Cook's mother started crying and howling, and she sank to the floor. Her reaction was so loud that Foxman was forced to stop the court proceedings and restart them soon later. Almost two months after Foxman dictated the 20-year sentence, he allowed Cook to withdraw her no-contest plea, striking down the initial sentence. He claimed that he did so due to a miscommunication problem with the woman's previous attorney. Number 5. T.J. Lane Lane, the teenager convicted of the ending of three students' lives at an Ohio high school in an anger rampage, has been sentenced to life in prison without parole. Judge David L. Fury noted Lane's apparent lack of remorse and motive as part of his reasoning for the sentence. Lane, who pleaded guilty to their charges, appeared in a Chardon court wearing a white t-shirt with the word killer written on it. During the hearing, Lane also gave the courtroom the middle finger. I understand that you're pleading guilty. You are pleading guilty to firearm specifications. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, this is the case of the State of Ohio against Thomas M. Lane, case 12. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to my left is uh, Nicholas Berling, Judge County Assistant Prosecutor. All right. Hey, that's all your client has to say, Mr. Friedman. Number 4. Fernando Salgado An 18-year-old Californian student broke down in hysterical tears in Fontana Superior Court while he was arraigned on criminal charges. Fernando Salgado calmly pleaded not guilty to the two charges related to separate classroom incidents at A.B. Miller High School but exploded when ordered to remain in jail until July 9, as his bail was set at $300,000. Get me out of here! Get me out of here! yelled Salgado as he cried out, I want to go home so bad! to his family and friends who had arrived in the courtroom to support him. Wearing a green jumpsuit, which indicated he was in protective custody, Salgado's appearance in court followed that of his teacher, 27-year-old Emmanuel De La Rosa, in connection with the alleged physical attacks on two students. Number 3. Damon Kemp 
A 19-year-old Florida man charged in the double homicide of his two roommates was denied bond after screaming from a wheelchair and grimacing in court. Damon Kemp faces two counts of second degree in the shooting deaths of Trey Ingraham and Jordan Payton, both age 19 in Daytona Beach. Ingraham's family members said the 19-year-old was helping Kemp by allowing him to live in his apartment for free. Detectives said neighbors failed in their duties by not calling police after hearing gunshots. Kemp was initially arrested on an unrelated charge of burglary. Kemp was then brought to Volusia County Court in a wheelchair screaming the word God over and over again at the top of his lungs. Cameras inside the courtroom showed the double case suspect baring his teeth, bulging his eyes, sticking out his bottom lip and talking over the judge. The judge found that there was probable cause for Kemp's arrest and denied him bond. God! 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 Number 2. Conrad Schaefer A judge sentenced an 18-year-old man to life in prison for a 2013 crime spree in Osceola County that took away two lives. Conrad Schaefer, 18, pleaded guilty in January to two counts of first degree. Schaefer could have been sentenced to 40 years in prison, but instead the judge gave him two consecutive life sentences, one for each first degree charge. Schaefer fatally shot David Guerrero, 17, who was on his way to catch a bus for work on June 26, 2013 in Kissimmee. Schaefer apologized to the victim's families. I was 15 at the time. I'm really sorry for the things I've done, and I know they were wrong, and I know my apology doesn't mean a thing to you. I know it won't change how you feel about me, Schaefer said. I got to do the time, and I mean, I'm sorry for what I did. I was 15 at the time, and I'm really sorry for the things I've done. And I know I did wrong, and I know my apology don't mean nothing to you. I just feel I need to apologize, and I really am sorry for what I've done. I wish it never happened. I wish I could take it back. I wish I could change things, but I can't. Number 1. Alyssa Bustamante a judge denied a new trial for a young Missouri woman who pleaded guilty to taking the life of a nine-year-old neighbor girl, but later sought a do-over because of a U.S. Supreme Court case invalidating mandatory life sentences for juveniles. Alyssa Bustamante was 15 years old in 2009 when she took the life of Elizabeth Olton and buried her in a wooded area west of Jefferson City. Bustamante wrote in her diary that it was an amazing and pretty enjoyable experience. She originally was charged with first degree, which would have carried a mandatory life sentence without parole. But shortly before her 2012 trial, Bustamante pleaded guilty to second degree and armed criminal action. She was sentenced on the murder charge to life in prison with the chance of parole, plus 30 years for the other charge. Several months after Bustamante pleaded guilty, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in a separate case that juveniles cannot face automatic life sentences without the possibility of parole. Bustamante then got a new attorney, who claimed her original public defenders were ineffective. At a court hearing in January, the now 20-year-old Bustamante testified that she wouldn't have accepted a plea deal had she known about the possibility for the nation's high court to wipe out mandatory life sentences for juveniles. Cole County Circuit Judge Pat Joyce wrote in a decision that Bustamante's request to set aside her guilty plea and sentence was meritless, and her original attorneys weren't deficient. Another option then there would have been no reason to have accepted that offer. Accepting the offer was to avoid the absolute certainty of life without parole. I'll present evidence and argue for the punishment that you all thought was appropriate. Yes. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.